Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. This is April Pride, and she is an expert in cannabis and psychedelics. And she has a lot to tell us today, and I'm so excited to have her on the show. Thank you very much, April, for coming on the show. Just wanted to introduce yourself and tell people a little about you. Stacy, thank you so much for having me, and thank you for all of the good work that you're putting out for people to find out how they can have their best life and feel good along the way. I really appreciate that. Uh, I am a Seattle-based creative entrepreneur, and I started working in cannabis in 2015. I had um, launched, I don't know, at that point, probably six businesses that I already sold a business. Um, Maybe I'd launched four at that point and sold a business. And when I launched this company called Vanderpop, there wasn't a lot being discussed in the news about cannabis. The green rush, rush was just had just begun in like the three years before, but there weren't a lot of new consumer brands because states were just starting to legalize. And Washington State, a lot of people don't know, legalized the same the same exact uh, on the same exact voting schedule as Denver in 2012. Mm-hmm. And we we went to market, our retail stores opened just a few months after theirs. So we quickly were on the heels of uh, Colorado, which was the first state to fully legalize adult use. And so that was when I got my own stash. I had never had my own stash of cannabis. If somebody had it, I said, yes, it was usually when we were drinking that never ended well. I mean, very rarely did that end well. And I it took me, I don't know, maybe a couple of decades to put that together, but yeah. I got there eventually. <laughs> and and um, so I met with a woman who was a client of mine. I had a dress company here in Seattle, and she had started working for the CEO of a large holding company that has uh, Marley Natural. So they have the licensing deal to produce um, cannabis products for the Marley family and several other Tilray, which became one of the largest cannabis companies in the world. Um, They happened just to be here in Seattle. And she was the executive assistant, the CEO. And she said, listen, April, I see all the decks. I see all the deals. Nobody's doing anything for women. Nobody's doing anything with a design. I went to architecture school. And I would say that that's really what I'm known for, for creating good looking stuff, um, whether it's brands or products. Um, And I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. It seemed like as a creative, we never get the opportunity to do something where there are no rules. Right. And having just like, honestly, I'd stumbled into fashion after hanging up my hat as an interior designer, even though I had a master's from Parsons and I really went, I went all the way at the end yeah. of the day, I was, that wasn't a career that I really felt I could pursue forever. Right. So um, I was just th- thrilled that maybe there was this other option out there. And I really thought that creatives had already jumped on this because I knew that there was a financial opportunity too, right? It was, in, it was the first time in my generation, in my lifetime, that there was a new industry that was being built, right? Mm-hmm. That's a big opportunity. Oh, huge. So, yeah. So I just jumped on it and said, okay, let's have dinner. I want to hear everything you know. And so we went to dinner uh, I knew the the uh, couple that owned the restaurant and the guy overheard us talking and he said, what are you so serious about? And she said, well, if uh, I want April to design her own cannabis line of accessories. And he said, if you do that, I'll give you the seed money. And that's how it started. Oh. And I sold it to the world's largest cannabis company within three years. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So a year in a year in, I sold it to my first company, and then we created a larger company in Canada. Because in at that point in 2017 is when I sold the first time. Um, that was really where everything was happening. Yeah. And v- Vanderpop was the name of the company, and we were focused on women, and we had focused on women from the beginning. So that was before the Women's March. It was before a lot of things in the headlines about women as CEOs. And it was just like a gut instinct that I had that the people that were coming to me and asking me the questions, the people that I saw that were really heal- not healing, but having their symptoms addressed is more how I like to describe how cannabis helps people. Yeah. Um, yeah. What They were women and no one was talking to them and there was no research. It was just their stories. So Vanderpop became 
We started with accessories to store, smoke, and share cannabis. I used my background in design to create a really beautiful line of accessories. And we transitioned to an educational platform where women's stories were being told so other women could connect with them and find out where maybe cannabis could fit in their life and yeah. also help to destigmatize it, right? Because women didn't feel like that was something that they wanted to share with others about as a choice that they were making. And of course, there's also issues of um, CPS. You know, I, I, met, I met with a woman who neighbor called cops on her because she was smoking weed outside of her apartment and she lost her kids. So this was, you know, 25 years ago, but it happened yeah. and, and it can still happen today. So, um, so after that experience, I launched a podcast um, called How to Do the Pot in cannabis um, with a partner. I sold it to my partner and then I launched into the podcast that I have now called The High Guide. And the high guide has gone from a season on high potency THC to music to quote trip to, to a uh, season on ketamine. And our most recent um, season is um, on psilocybin strains. So on psilocybin magic mushroom strains. Right. So when I started the current podcast, the high guide, I had no yeah. idea I knew that my life was going to be changing because I had decided to get divorced mm -hmm. and I moved out of my family home six months after that podcast started. And I had no idea how much my life would actually change and how right. much of a toll it would take on my mental health, even though everything was really, you know, we were able to do it amic amicably, amicably. Yeah. <laughs> it's been almost, it's been almost two years and that's still the case. My ex-husband and I are going to sit on the sidelines of our son's soccer tournament all weekend this weekend, right? It's just like all cool. So, but I lost my family and that's, that's all I, we had been together since we were 22 years old. I also lost my best friend and spit in oh, wow. the person, you know, we helped raise each other. And yeah. at this point we were 45. So 23 oh, wow. years, you're mourning the end of a, you know, a big part of your life. And that took me so much longer than I thought it would. Oh yeah. And, definitely. Yeah. So I smoked a lot of weed during the pandemic and I continued to do so when I moved out and I knew it was helping me and I gave myself a year. Yeah. Uh, I knew it was helping me to like, probably not totally fall apart right. and to be optimistic. Yes. Um, but I gave myself a year and I knew at the end of that year, I had to reset my relationship with cannabis. Right. So a, a year was approaching and I wasn't making a lot of progress on my own, but I had started an underground psilocybin company because the question I was getting with my podcast is where do I get this? I want to do all the things that you're talking about, but I have no idea where to buy it. You're right. And so I set up. I set up a person with an email and just said, oh, you should just email this person. And then I found my trusted source, a person that I had known. I didn't know that she was cultivating mushrooms and she would just drop ship these orders to yeah. clients. So that's not legal. <laughs> so I couldn't do that forever. And I knew that, but I wasn't touching the product. So that made me feel better. Um, but then I realized I'm living in the world in the North America's largest decriminalized city. We've de decriminalized magic mushrooms. So what can I do with that? Right. And um, and the reason that that became really important to me is because microdosing psilocybin is how I was able to decrease my usage with cannabis. Yeah. And around the same time when that was like looking possible, I got a, a call or an inbound request to have a guest on the show who was a lead clinician for a ketamine clinic and at well, an at home ketamine platform. And so I went through the um, review process on my own and I qualified um, because I, I, I turned out I had functional depression, right? So, um, which is pretty normal after a divorce. Oh, yeah. And after one treatment of this at home ketamine, I didn't smoke cannabis for a month and it was, I felt great. A month I had a part of a joint with a friend and that was probably a slippery slope. So I did another, I had four ketamine lozenges. Um, and so I just continued to work in that way and right. to microdose. And it's been, I've been able to like have a normal relationship with cannabis. That's really for me, an alternative to alcohol. Right. Like, um, 
that's what cannabis helped me do the first time was to, you know, I had stopped drinking for three, three years. And so I was like, this is like not that much fun of a life. I can't do anything. <laughs> and so, I was just happy that there was something. And it was like, it was a normal relationship for a long time. And then, you know, yeah. life got hard and that made it a lot easier. So, um, so I stand here today as a person that has, has a personal experience with these substances and how they've helped to get my life back on track, help to help, help me figure out who I am without, you know, my person yeah. for my adult life. And I am committed to helping other people figure out if this is a solution that is right for them, because there are things you have to know about your family's medical history and your own medical history before you should consume these substances or cannabis any oh, mind altering substance. Yeah. So, um, our, the, the name of the psilocybin brand is of like minds and oh, that God. is very, yeah, it's very much based on wanting to create a network and a community of people and like a supply chain yeah. that is doing this for the consumer. Because what I witnessed in cannabis is once it's commercialized, yeah. <laughs> It is not about the consumer. Period. No, yeah. No. It's about profits. Yeah. hundred Prof- percent. Sadly. Yeah. And this is, yeah. And this is just, like I said, cannabis helps to heal symptoms. Psilocybin is healing people. Right. MDMA is healing people's like core wounds from right. decades ago, from childhood. And I'm witnessing this. So that's something that we can't take away that potential. We can't take that potential away because we think there's more money. There'll be plenty of money if we do this right and we improve humankind. A hundred percent. Yeah. I wish people thought more like you because that's exactly true. It is. Yeah. And the mushrooms will teach us that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So the ketamine, the ketamine, um, the fourth season, the ketamine season is ketamine for divorce, depression, and dependency. So I really share my full story in that, in that season. Now that's a great, you know, topic. Like, how did it help your divorce? Like, now going through a divorce is so stressful. It's just overwhelming. People sometimes, you know, break down completely. You know, you you're going through a breakup. Not only are you breaking up with the person that you you bonded with for so x amount of years, and you you know shared so much time with and memories, but sometimes it can get really gruesome. And you know, people who loved each other for so long could just really go against each other. And then finances are involved and then legal issues are involved and people get so overwhelmed, which they're entitled to, because it is yes. very overwhelming. So, you know, how can you use, using, you know, everything that you just explained to us actually help somebody that is going through a relationship problems or is going through a divorce, you know, cause I find that very interesting and I'd like to know more how it helped you. I think we have to start with the topic of neuroplasticity mm-hmm. and what that is, is, and that is, uh, we're going to think of it this way. That was like railroad tracks in your brain mm-hmm. going to different parts of your brain that have created behaviors and thought patterns yeah. that you just do over and over again, because it's how you've always done it. And they are no longer serving you, but they're so grooved in there. Just it's like a, it's your habits. path of least, yeah, yeah. Path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. What? Okay. So there are a couple of things that ketamine, psilocybin and other psychedelics can help do. And that is to increase your neuroplasticity. So imagine a snow comes over those railroad tracks. Yeah. And all of a sudden everything's you can go anywhere in your brain. You don't have to continue on those grooves. You can make new grooves and decide to do things differently. And your brain can start to help support that. So what, what psychedelics do is it comes in and it's like a, it's not the only way to increase neuroplasticity. I think that's really also important. You can do, you can increase your neuroplasticity by spending time in nature, meditating, journaling. Yes sleeping more, spending right. time with people who make you laugh, right. you know? Yeah. There are a lot of ways to do that. There are people that have had significant depression and mental health issues that this can help with, and they really need a jump start. you know? Yeah. Right. And so that's, that's what we're talking about here is like getting you to a place where you can start to do things differently because it's, it's just, you actually have the mental strength and capacity to do, to do so. So, 
so that's where I start with things is like, just get your brain to a place where it can do things differently because your life is never going to be the same again. I was telling that to a friend recently. I said, there are all these little things that happen after you get divorced until one day you just realize it's never going to be the same again. And it doesn't happen. It's not one big hit on your forehead. It's like, yeah. oh, that person and I used to see each other. Oh, this used to happen. Oh, my kids and I and my ex-husband would do this for 4th of July. Yeah. So it's like, it takes a full year of holidays and events and really transitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're like, oh, and that is when, because I, the financial situation, he stayed in the family home. So our children were able to continue to have time in the family home. Right. That was great. And <laughs> yeah, we, we did mediation. So that's it good. was yeah, all those things were good, but I personally, emotionally, really was just trying to get on board with a with the future that I had never even thought about. Right. So, so what what I've learned from facilitators who work with these substances with people is that they allow you when you're in this altered state, your problems you look at them from a third person perspective, right? Yeah. You are a witness to your thoughts. So rather than judging your thoughts, you should come, they help you to come at how you think about yourself, others, and situations with compassion and with curiosity. Like, huh, why did I respond in that way? Why does that make me feel that way? Rather than you shouldn't have done that. You should have responded that way. Why do you always feel like that? You should really grow up, right? right. <laughs> like the things that we tell ourselves. Oh, and sure. so I really, I really have seen that for myself. And I've seen that with others where all of a sudden these problems that you have when you're in your real life and your real brain, <laughs> mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like, if that is not nearly as big as I thought it was going to be. And right. I can also see these two or three different alternatives that mm, I'm going to have to go a different way to get there, but they're going to be more positive in the end and I can survive this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've seen that be helpful. Cause I feel like sometimes we could be our worst enemies, you know? And oh, we cool. could, we- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, you could a- actually end up destroying yourself if you don't really handle the situations properly. And I I think that's amazing that it kind of takes you out and makes you kind of look at everything from a third person. And I think that's what people really need is to sometimes take themselves out of themselves and really look at themselves from the sidelines, you know, and really then you get a better perspective of what's going on and, you know, what do I really need to do to move forward? Yeah, and that process is called cultivating the witness within. Okay. Isn't that great? I like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just be your own witness to yeah. yourself and your thoughts and your behavior. Yeah. That's and amazing. for me, the future that you want, right? You kind of have to get out of your brain that you've had for since you were eight years old and you yeah. wanted it to be this way for your own eight-year-old. <laughs> Fast forward and, you know, you have to dream up something new. Yeah. I think one of the biggest problems we had in our nation and we still do is that there's so many myths out there, you know, you know, we've been, people don't realize, but for thousands of years, cannabis has been used, you know, medically for different issues. And, you know, people don't, you know, they, you know, I think what our society was reverting back to the seventies and they're just thinking about, you know, like peace and, and let's smoke a joint and blah, 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 you know, or they have these, you know, there was so many myths out there and they don't realize that it could actually be used for people you know health wise for their own benefit and you know what are some of the myths that you came across and can you clarify some of those myths with some truths I think some of the the previous myths um are well understood right like cannabis is a gateway drug I think we should rephrase that if you're open Mm -hmm. to mind-altering substances to begin with you are probably a curious person who is going to try something other than cannabis, but cannabis is the most accessible and has been, right? Yeah. It also, because of the public service announcements, like just say no and dare, in some ways, cannabis seemed like the, the le- least scary option too, you right. know? 
Mm-hmm. So, and kids are just, um, I'm saying kids because a lot of people begin their relationship with cannabis in their teens or in yeah. college in their early twenties. And so you're not thinking about anything. You're just like, oh, my friends are doing it and they look like they're having a good time. Now we both know that it most, <laughs> depending on how you consumed for the first time, yeah. you probably were not given a, a clearly packaged or clearly labeled package from a dispensary and you know how much is in the dose. Exactly. Right. So like, I think that that is also a myth that, you know, what you did in college is exactly what you're signing up for today. No, that's, you know, it's a very different world in terms of how you consume cannabis. The myths today are what I would really like to address. Yeah. And that is that cannabis is good for you. Just like straight up. Yeah. It, like anything else and that it's not addictive. Mm-hmm. That is also no longer true. Right. There may have been a time when it was less likely that it would be. Um, there was a time when the THC levels here, I'll explain it to you like this. Okay. As na- nature intended THC and CBD levels in a plant were mm-hmm. almost one to one, like right. 8% THC. So less than 10%. Mm-hmm. And six percent CBD. Right. CBD it helps to mag- negate and mitigate the high that THC can invoke. So right. you don't get the psychoactivity is not nearly as intense. Yeah. If there's CBD also in the plant, what we've done over the last forty years is to re-engineer mm-hmm. these plants and we've taken out nearly all of the CBD. And now most of this of the THC products that are sold in dispensaries is over 20% without the CBD. Right. At, th- at this point, a year ago, there was a study, a fourth, or there was a um, report of 4,000 research studies that uh, were scanned that had looked at high potency THC And it was determined that there's a 4X likelihood that you will develop cannabis use disorder with these high potency THC products. And if you're under 18, the likelihood is much higher Mm. because our brains and our receptors are not designed for 20% THC. They become overloaded and that's a lot of dopamine. Yeah. And boy, our brains really love dopamine. And so that's where the that's where the addictive qualities of cannabis have started to really rear their ugly heads. And, you know, I have a 16 year old son and I was having him come, you know, come in, let me smell you when you go out at night. Guess what? If they smoke weed, you can't smell it. Yeah. If they, if they vape nicotine, you can't smell it. Right. And when it's in those forms, the super concentrated form. Yeah. So bad, so bad for them. I know. So bad for them. It It is. I'm not, you know, like I, I actually do still consume cannabis. I, mm, I, there's another myth is that cannabis kills brain cells. And that was, that was, everyone said, oh, that's a myth. That's a myth. Well, that's actually interestingly mm, sort of true. And in right. that if you are under 25 and you drink a lot and, or you smoke cannabis a lot, people who have drank a lot will re their um, brain cells will regenerate. Mm-hmm. But if, if cannabis killed your brain cells, they don't regenerate. Right. So, you know, it, it does kill brain cells and yeah, I'm not, again, I am, I am pro cannabis because I am anti-alcohol for the most part. You know? yeah. So I think that having that alternative is a big deal, but it's like anything else. Don't drink the moonshine, mm-hmm. maybe opt for something that's going to going to be actually, you know, very pleasant experience and har- yeah. and, and, and not as harsh on your body or your brain. Well, I, so think I guess those like, are some of the big myths to review. Yeah. I think that's why it's very important to go to a dispensary because, you know, you, you hear all these horror stories, people are getting it off the streets, you know, you got fentanyl and a lot of drugs now, you know, all you need is like, not even a like a pinky's worth and you, a person could die and their their body can shut down there's been many cases yeah. of it you know you don't you know in a in a cannabis leaf there's over 1000 strands 
So think about that. And only dispensaries, you know, have the knowledge to know how to extract it. Pharmaceutical companies know how to extract it. Scientists know how to extract it. But someone off the street is just going to crumble it all up and put it in a bag. And who else knows what's in that bag? And that's where the danger set in. You don't know what you're buying when you buy off the street. And they could be lots of different strands and people could have lots of different bad reactions. You know, some people can get psychotic. Some people could get really anxiety. Some people get really zombie-like. So it's really important to go to a dispensary and explain, you know, to the person, you know, or even a doctor, because now they do write medical marijuana out for people explain what you're going through, explain the problems you're having so you could get the right type of dosage of cannabis. And so you could actually benefit and actually be able to, you know, help your condition, whatever it may be. Because I feel like, you know, people don't realize that and they don't realize how many different strands are in it in one leaf. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not about just crumble it in a bag and just hand it to the person, you know, lots of bad things could happen. It's really something that needs to be addressed by someone who has knowledge in this field. You bring up I think one of the most important points, and that is that when you walk into a dispensary, you're buying a tested product mm -hmm. and you know, not all states, all states require that the testing is on the back. Not all states require that it's extensive. Actually, yeah. Connecticut has the most extensive labeling requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a big deal to know what you're putting into your body. So right. the testing is, is huge. And um I think that I think that the fentanyl scare I'm hoping has people realizing more and more the importance of really knowing your source and yeah. that's why I started that's why I took the risk and I started a psilocybin company because the people that I would have to recommend my friends talk to you know I mean they're not educators right so right. you send them a message on WhatsApp on Signal on Telegram they send you pictures or a menu and a price. They send you their, you know, Venmo or however you're going to pay them. And then you get something in the mail and that's, that's just how it goes. But then you go online, you're trying to figure out like how much do what's my dose to your point. Psilocybin also has a lot of strains to choose from. Right. So, yeah. you know, there's one that's really good for depression that helps right. with euphoria. There's one, you know, there are different op options. And yeah. so depending on the outcome that you want, you should really know. And so I just felt like at least I can provide some education when I'm emailing back and forth and I'm going to be learning too, right? You know, yeah. I I was learning on the job. And right. so that's why I've decided to come above ground and work within the decriminalized framework because Seattle decriminalized it, but then we didn't follow up with any education. And the questions that people have are significant, starting with what about my current pharmaceuticals? So mm -hmm. let's talk about that for a second, right? If yeah. you have a family history of bipolar schizophrenia or um, psychosis, you can't, you can't go near this stuff. You can't go near cannabis Can't go near psilocybin. Uh, there's probably protocols for ketamine, all of it. Right. right. So and I say that as a person who's actually met a mom whose son went to college, smoked cannabis, and has been in a mental institution ever since that one time he smoked cannabis because they had a history of bipolar in their family. And there just wasn't that information out there. And I don't think that that information is being broadcast nearly loud enough. No, not at all. Not at all. And then there also are some kind of medications that when you have, you're on certain medications, you could decrease the potency of that medication or have some type of interaction. So you really have to yeah. be careful. If you're taking other medications, you have to make sure that you can actually use cannabis and, you know, and you can't be your own doctor and think, oh, you know, it's not going to do anything. You know, you have to really make sure because it could cause problems for certain people, you know, and yeah. you really have to protect yourself and really know what you're putting in your body. For some people, it could be an amazing benefit for them. And for others, it could be really something that, you know, could, could be really bad. So you really have to know your, your medical history, know your situation, know what you're taking and then decide, you know, or have a medical professional or somebody that's in the field that knows a lot and have them tell you that, you know, 
I don't think this is going to be good for you. I think this is going to be good for you and not just be your own doctor. You can't, you can't really rely on the internet for everything because there's a lot of fake news on the internet that over 60% of the information on the internet is, is fake news and advertisements. So you really have to know where you're getting your information, how liable is it? And what are the resources, you know, who's providing this information? Is it a doctor? Is it a scientist? Is it somebody who's an expert in the field? And then, you know, double check you know, and because this is your body we're talking about. So, you know, it's yeah. a medicine. cannabis is a medicine. And so is even, even the supplement red yeast rice, you know, they use that in a lot of pharmaceutical companies for, you know, high cholesterol. So these natural supplements are considered medications. So you have to be careful. You're putting a medication in your body. It's so true. I mean, I was just sitting here being reminded if you take a medication that says you cannot drink grapefruit or have grapefruit eat grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice there's cbd well there's a big interaction with cbd which you can get in gas stations you shouldn't but you can you know so it seems like a benign thing but it can interact with your medication and um psilocybin magic mushrooms acts on your serotonin pathway so if you take ssris you're wasting your money and your time yeah. also taking magic mushrooms because you're not going to get high Right. You're not going to get the benefits that you're hoping for. So, and you shouldn't just stop taking your SSRI. So to your point, yeah. I mean, but then people really don't know if they can go to their doctors. Yeah. A lot of people are scared to, you know, and right. a lot of, you have a lot of doctors that are not open to it. And then you have a lot of doctors that are really on it. And they're really realizing that, you know, doctors are, are, are realizing that cannabis can be a huge benefit. CBD can be a huge benefit in a lot of medical conditions. So it's, it, there has been a turnaround in the medical field, but you really need to know who you're talking to and, you know, and you find a doctor that has a lot of knowledge in that field because certain doctors specialize in these things and they know up-to-date information about different conditions and how cannabis can be good or it can be bad for you. So you, these are the type of doctors you really need to talk to. And I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about these over-the-counter CBDs and THCs? They're out everywhere. People are just buying it. They're not really understanding what they're buying. They're not looking at the ingredients. If you have some of them with, with gummies and they just sprinkle a little bit on top and they think the whole gummy is full of cannabis or full of you know THC or CBD, and, you know, it's only maybe what's on, on sprinkled on top, or, you know, they look at the, the label in it and it says X amount of milligrams and they think each one is X amount of milligrams and it's the whole bottle. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, people are getting misled because they're not informed and, you know, you don't know what the quality is. You don't know what really is in there. And so what's your take on over the counter THC and CBD? So the over-the-counter THC, I think what you're referring to is Delta-8. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah because Delta-8 is, it's when CBD actually in a hemp plant or cannabis plant, but a hemp plant degrades and it becomes Delta-8. So Delta THC, Delta THC, not, I'm not going to get it wrong. It's but THC nine, Delta nine, it's not, yes. it's, it's, it's anyway, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Is the one that we get, gets us high, right? Right. Delta eight is right there. It will still get you high, but at 60% of the potency of THC Delta nine. So, right. um, so what they, if you buy, cause you can buy online flour, Delta eight flour. Right. And what you're actually, that you can bake with and make your own edibles. You can smoke however you want to do it. They extract oil. You can get a vape pen. But what they're actually doing with the flour is they're taking Delta-8, synthetic Delta-8, because there's not enough hemp in the world. It's so little, <laughs> the amount that you get from an actual hemp plant yeah. that they've just synthesized it and they spray the flour with that. Right. You're not... And it's hemp flour, which is fine, but I don't know what's in the synthetics. I don't know what the binding agents are. I don't know all that. Yeah. And you're going to combust it and inhale it. That's not good. So that is what you're signing up for. At the same time, Stacey, if you live in a state that doesn't have legal cannabis and you don't want to continue to take your benzos, 
mm-hmm. or you know whatever the case may be. You don't want to drink anymore, and this is your option. I would say if you could not buy at a gas station, that's my first piece of advice. <laughs> and if if you need if you need a good source for Delta Eight, um, Donkey Super. It's D A N K E Super. I love their gummies, and I think that they're incredible. So, oh, that's good to know. Yeah, they're online. You can get them online. Um, and that was my first experience with Delta Eight. I had I had one at home. I think I had half of it. And I was watching television and about 45 minutes passed. And I was like, why is everything kind of twinkly? Oh, right. Because I, <laughs> I actually, I was like, this isn't going to get me high. It's just like a dessert, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it did. And it was very mild. It was perfect for me because I have ADHD and I cannot sit down for a television show right. or I have to have my computer on too. And I've got all these things happening. And I just sat there in this chair, I watched something for an hour. So that was a big, that was huge for me, you know, and I didn't have all the psychoactivity, um, which can interfere with my organization as a person with ADHD. So I have to be careful there. Um, Yeah. So I, I'm conflicted is the answer. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. I feel that. But no gas, no gas stations. You don't buy your medicine in gas stations unless it's like Advil. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A hundred percent. De- definitely. Or a Dr. Pepper. Sometimes that's medicine for me, I guess. But. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been, it's been great. Like, if you had to give people a couple of tips before we, we close this, you know, do you have anything you'd like to inform people that we haven't gone over to, today that you really would like people to understand, you know, about, you know, this is aesthetics and, and, and about cannabis and, and maybe, a, you know, some tips about your products that people can understand understand, you know, and just give some people some, you know, end in knowledge so they can really close off with some really clear thoughts and understand, you know, what's good and what's not. And, and maybe if they want to dip into this and start researching this, you know, what, how, how they should begin. I think you need to under you need to know first what outcome you're looking for, Mm -hmm. right? If you're, if you're trying to wean yourself off of a pharmaceutical, because the side effects have, you know, they've just gotten to a point where it's not worth it anymore. Yeah. That's, that's one outcome. You're trying to reduce your alcohol intake. That's a different outcome. You want to have more patience with your young children. That's also a different outcome, right? So depending on what you want, will determine which substance you should should research first or should think about first. So I would say get really straight on and don't try to like overhaul your life in one week. Like yeah. pick one thing, pick the one thing that's maybe the simplest, but it's going to have the biggest positive impact. And then go that route is what I would start with. Um, if you do have any pre existing medical conditions or your family does, like we mentioned, bipolar, schizophrenia, psychosis, you know, it's interesting. They are looking at ser- or at um, psilocybin to help with um, bipolar, but I think people would be surprised at how low those doses are. And there's a lot more involved than, hey, we think this is going to work. Don't try and do that on your own. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I would say family history, know your, know your outcome, your intention, know your family history. Right. And then know the legalities in your state and where you live. Right. And so under get a better understanding of that, because actually I was with a friend this weekend and we drove through a neighborhood here in Seattle and she started laughing. She was like, April, remember when we went to our first dispensary and it turned out it wasn't a legal dispensary. And there were all these bags, garbage bags, garbage bags filled with weed and cash. They brought out a garbage bag and just started putting more cash in the ATM. And I was like, are you sure this is legal? Oh my God. Yeah. So, and it had passed in Washington state, but it hadn't gone into effect yet. It was very unclear. But just get clear on what the regulatory status is of where you live. Yeah. Those would be my three things. They started closing down a few of them in our area, in the New York, New Jersey area, because that was exactly, you know, they were not legalized and, you know, people thought 
they were a legal dispensary and they weren't. And so they're starting to really, you know, really take notice and really get right. They, I, I think they've always been strict since they legalize it, but they're even getting more so making sure that all these places are legalized and they're just not calling their, their facility a, a dispensary. They really are a dispensary. Yeah, because the illegal dispensaries are selling mushrooms now. <clears throat> oh, are they really? Yeah, you can get both. And then what's it going to be next? You can go in there and get your Molly. You can go in there and get, you know, <laughs> ass. You know, it's just like, <laughs> where is this going to go? And when you start to get into the powders and the pills, that's the fentanyl issue, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's what people just, have to be careful. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the three things. I'm so grateful for your time. This has been awesome. I love talking about all these things. Yeah, and I love talking here. about them with people who are also knowledgeable. So thank you oh, for educating yourself. Welcome. Yeah, it's cool. And before we go, tell people where they could reach you. Tell people a little about your podcast. I want people before where they go, so that they know where they can find you if they have questions sure. or if they want to look at your products or anything, you know, maybe like the different things I've looked on your website. You have an amazing website. Tell people like what they can, you know, really find and, and how you can help them and, and so forth. Yeah. So you can find us right now at the high dot guide online. And that's also the name of my podcast, the high guide. Um, we are having a name change by the time this airs, it will still be the high guide, but in the next month or so will be of like minds and the website, um, will be of like minds.co. You can actually go there today. It's just, a, um, a way to sign up for some of our microdose meetups here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of like minds will also become the podcast name. So that's what we're working on now. Oh, that's and my name is, my name's April pride. If you look up April pride, Seattle, you'll figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's been amazing having you on this show and thank you so much for, you know, sharing your knowledge. I think people really need to understand there's so much confusion out there and people have to also realize that cannabis is not a bad thing. If it's used appropriately for, and it's used the way it's supposed to, it can really help a lot of different conditions and help people in many ways that they didn't even think were possible and that they really need to decipher the myths from the truth and they have to understand, you know, dig deep and, 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 you know, ask questions. You know, I, I always say, be your own, you know, don't be your own doctor, but you know, in a sense, in a sense, do your research and ask, yeah. write down questions, anything that you're not sure of, write them down and then find an expert, find a doctor, find somebody that is knowledgeable and that is not against it and ask them questions so they can answer it appropriately. And they can tell you, no, that's not true. This is true. No, you should, you know, really consider this and, you know, and, and it could really be something really beneficial. Our world is changing and, you know, it's changing for good, but you're always going to find those people out there that are going to try to make a quick buck. And they think more about the dollar bill than they do about people. And you find that in any industry. And you really, you know, there's people like you, April Pride, that, you know, actually really, you know, care about the people. And that's what the, that, the, what, that's what society has to look for. They have to look for more people like you or just contact you and really, you know, find, you know, you know, the benefits of it. And maybe it could be something worthwhile that could actually change someone else's life. So thank you for what you do. I really appreciate everything you do. And it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Great. Thank you, Stacey. Have a nice weekend. Oh, you too.